me so tough And I'm gonna take a turn on the world I go Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we completed our 16 day, 2000 mile journey from Bermuda to the Azores. We tied up and then went out for a few drinks before succumbing to our beds. Welcome to Horta in the Azores. It's the first landfall that most of us have seen for at least a thousand miles. And as tradition dictates, visiting yachts get the right to paint their logos on the pontoon, or in fact, any flat surface around the marina. It's awesome. the coolest thing ever. Like, what the it, hell? It goes all the way down there. That's amazing. All the way around. It's pretty nice. And Migaloo's just, see how it says wet? They're oh really? Right, they're just getting ready to do theirs. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, nice. Oh, I want to do it. Murals aside, time for a quick look around, a good breakfast, and then start working on the boat. We've got a lot of work to get her ready for the next thousand miles. European breakfast. Yep. Ham and cheese toasties. Coffee? Hang on, let's, let's just discuss what we have here. Two coffees, one orange juice, two pretty substantial ham and cheese toast sandwiches, all seven euros and 40 cents. So that's seven bucks. About seven. American dollars, what's that about? No. Yeah. Yeah, uh, something like that. Our first day of repairs, and one thing we have to do for our first day of repairs is to get our jib repaired. We've got some split stitches. And so, we've got something we haven't had for a very long while, which is shore power, which means that I can do the jib repair on the pontoon, which is far, far easier because. Uh, I can spread the sail out a little bit more and get it through. So I'm pretty happy about that. Doing what Shanda does. So the most important job we had to do was to sew up our jib. We had a split in the sacrificial strip which we noticed mid-Atlantic and we patched it, but it needed a more permanent repair. <laughs> Something's not happening. We've broken the sail right. I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> Wish us luck. Second on my list of jobs was unfortunately shaving off my moustache. I promised Teresa that I'd only keep it to the Azores, and well, a promise is a promise. All right, so what is it, day two in the Azores? Day one, which is like, we've only just done 24 hours. Well, I think it's time for um, my little visitor to go. <laughs> what does that mean? I think it's time to take the tash off. <laughs> It is like Oh, that's good. Well, good. Right. Do you know how much the present? I feel like I should be singing Queen songs. <laughs> All we hear is Radio Gaga, Radio Blah Blah, Radio What's New. 
Sun. Shout out of its former self. Anyway. All right, I'm gonna get a shower. All right. And with the sale repaired, my moustache gone, it was time to reward ourselves with another attempt at a night out. We are in Horta still in uh, Fayel in the Azores and uh, we've been here for three days now and it has barely stopped raining the entire time. Uh, we got in in okay weather and then the next day it was just grey sky, rain uh, and then since then it hasn't really stopped. Um, so unfortunately we've not really had a chance to explore uh, the way that we would have liked to have done uh, we're thinking of hiring a car and uh, doing a bit of a drive around the island which would have been awesome um, but you know there's no point in this kind of weather and uh, so yeah we've just kind of been concentrating on the jobs that we've had to do on board um, and just recovering from the journey uh, it wasn't particularly arduous but you know it's always tiring especially with only three people on board um, and you know just preparing ourselves uh, for the next leg which is going to be I believe 920 miles or something uh, from here to Lagos uh, we have an option of stopping at an island en route which is called Santa Maria um, and I think that's 180 miles away from where we are now so that will break up the journey a little bit but uh, I'm not sure whether we're gonna do that or not um, I think once we're underway we're just going to carry on unless there's some pressing reason to stop. So we're uh, treating the next leg as though it's going to be one kind of week long uh, crossing and um, we're planning to leave tomorrow. So not much time in the Azores at all which is a shame. But that being said the weather at the moment hasn't been particularly conducive to uh, anything other than just staying on the boat and um, doing our jobs and I believe that Nick has just returned having done some provisioning <laughs> are you okay? why do birds <laughs> suddenly appear every time? I don't want you coming down here dripping wet you're gonna make everything wet down you sound like some old <laughs> fish wine Oh, we've only got a dry towel, have we? Oh, we probably, I probably got a dry towel downstairs somewhere. I'm not allowed to have. No, you can have. Do you want me to bring it up to you? No, I'm going downstairs. I'm coming downstairs anyway. I can't not come downstairs. I've got all the fresh food. <laughs> well, how'd you go? I'm wet as a minx. <laughs> well, I feel a little lighter. I feel lightheaded. I feel lightheaded with a lack of tash. Look, at least 10 years that means I look 21, babe. <laughs> we had one free afternoon in Horta where the rain actually cleared up. We weren't able to paint our logo as everything was soaking wet, but we did get to go and watch a local rally championship. afternoon and our time in Horta coming to a close, we head back to the boat to prepare for our last thousand miles. Join us next week as we depart on our final leg of our Atlantic crossing and we arrive in Portugal. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe by clicking this button here. All of our social media is down below and we hope to see you next week. <laughs>